the frustration of the educated, more proactive um, youth who were mandated from the South were in total agreement with elders such as Lyle Munro Jr., uh, Jenny Munro, um, and myself as an observer and being there as basically a council or someone who's you know, been around. Um, they also learned, they had questions as well, but they also soon learned that I belong to a different club of people. And that is that um, I didn't sit with the, um, my delegation or New South Wales or Victoria. Um, I sat with the senior elders. There were lawmen, senior lawmen, because I belonged to that group, that club. And so uh, that bond requires that us as a group sit together. We were concerned about the fact that nobody was having a discussion about if we give the white man the power in his constitution to pass laws for Aborigines per se and Torres Strait Islanders, then essentially we're consenting to them having the power then to interfere with Aboriginal law and custom because we would have given them a constitutional power to the executive government of Australia to make laws for that. Now they might say, well, we, you know, we wouldn't do that. We'll, we'll pass laws for um, the protection of sites and languages and, you know, and, and, and ceremony and all that, your teachings. Um, but how can we be assured of that when in fact you already have a position where Western Australia, in the legislature in Western Australia, They've altered their heritage laws, which allows them to deregister Aboriginal sacred sites. Because they're saying, no one do ceremony there anymore. But people got the story for that. And people may not be doing ceremony there, but they understand the sacredness of that. They understand the, the religious significance and, and sanctity of that place. But they deregistering it so as to not interfere with Aboriginal sacred law um, and allow mining to take place. Yeah? Now, same thing in, in South Australia. They have the South Australian Land Rights Act for the APY, Anungupinjaro, Yankarajaro country. Yeah? What they do in there in South Australia is that the Parliament of South Australia has the power to change that law, that, that APY law. And so, but that's a government law, even though it doesn't impact on, on their ceremony law, but it shows that the Parliament can amend that law and give the power to the minister to do what he wants within the APY. Now because it's free old title um, under their, um, now given to them Blackford, the South Australian Parliament, they can also change the law to take away that free old title yeah, from them and then secure the power into someone else's hands, like a trust for example. So they take it out of their, out of their thing. So uh, we were talking about this yeah, and I was explaining that to them. And they had their own white lawyer that they also ringing up and talking to as well. So it wasn't just me. Yeah. And that's what people were not seeing, that there was a white lawyer and that there is a white lawyer in Adelaide who works for the APY. Yeah. So they were, they were getting it from both ends. Yeah. So um, they're cleverer than what people think they are. Yeah. And never underestimate a, a clever man. Yeah. Never. And so... So those young ones who went later on, women come there talking about don't take notice of that grey-haired fellow there because he might be telling you lies or, you know, he not to be trusted, that one there. I know to them old fellows that, no, no, wait a minute, we've been working with him for a long time. So, so they, they misread that one as well. And, um, and they were very concerned because they had the power. They had the power. So I was explaining to them that if they give that power to the executive government of Australia, well then will they accept a restriction by way of a caveat in the Constitution to say they are not allowed to interfere with Aboriginal law and custom? Yeah. Now they might say that they can protect that by legislation, but as we see in Western Australia, those examples that I just gave you. The other thing is in New South Wales, 
the same thing. Uh, in New South Wales, they say there's no more ab real Aborigines. Yeah? And so the state government, you know, passed law for um, biodiversity and conservation. And in that, they're just giving them cut blood's right to clear all the land. When there are sacred trees there, there's um, spirit trees there, there there's them, um, medicine bushes, there's um, ceremonial um, medicine there, and then you we got no access to where our ochre is, they clear all that there. And when they clear them trees, they clear in our mimi, and they clear in all of the associated biodiversity that belong to us, and that's our totemic relationships. And, they, and a lot of us know it, a lot of us know it, despite what they say, yeah? And so they're de destroying our connection to our country by clearing the land. Now, they don't talk to us about that. They don't compensate us for that. But there's a psychological um, nostalgia that goes with that, which creates a mental problem, right? And so people get sick spiritually, emotionally sick when they see in their land get cleared, watching this destruction take place. And that causes a lot of mental health in our communities and amongst those people who are watching this happen. And these fellas here will, if that happens in this country, Central Australia, when these white men start advancing up here, they're already doing it by way of um, um, by way of clearing all this land for mining. Yeah, and these old people are going to die, just like our old people died, because of mental trauma and the powerlessness to stop it. Now, unless the government gives them the power and gives them a written guarantee. Um, or, a, or a national legislation saying no, yeah, then um, there is potential for our culture to be totally destroyed. And that they will maintain the, you know, the, what do you call it, the stick stones and bones um, mentality and policies, but our spirituality will be wiped out and our connection to land through spirit will be wiped out. And if our sacred sites where we do ceremony are wiped out and we don't have access to that again, then um, you may as well just shoot the people because that's the effect it will have. You will have people who have become walking corpse and totally lost. And um, the devastation that's going to cause will be, it's you know, just irreplaceable you'll never get it back, no way in the world. And, um, and now, none of that was discussed at that meeting, none of it, yeah. And without that, um, we cannot go ahead and proceed with anything yeah, until that's discussed. And the only way we can discuss that, as the old fellow said, we gotta get that man who represents the Queen, to come here and sit on country with us, they're referring to the Governor General. He got to sit on country with us, he got to talk to us. We want him to put the Queen's signature on a paper to say, We are not going to interfere with our law and culture, and all our sacred sites and ceremony places and our song lines are not going to be interfered with. Done.